Hi everybody, welcome back to Quilted from the Roots. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to make this cute Dresden umbrella block. And if you stay tuned till the end, I'm gonna teach you a bonus block of how to make this fun April showers block. This happens to actually be Tatumi Mountain Quilters April Advanced Block of the Month. So if you would like to learn how to make this block, please keep watching. So let's briefly discuss what we're gonna need to make this block. To start out, you're gonna need a background square that is eight inches by eight inches. You're also going to need a strip for your umbrella handle, which is one inch by 12 inches. And then you're going to need for the top of your umbrella, a square that is two and three quarter inches by two and three quarter inches. And then you're gonna need five colors for your Dresdens. If you were going to make more than one block, you would want to just cut a five inch strip. But since we are making just one block, you're gonna need a three inch by five inch rectangle. And that should be large enough for you to cut your Dresden plates from each color. All right, so to cut your Dresdens, you're gonna need to either print out the template from the pattern this little square here, you check to make sure that this is one inch and that way you'll know if your printer settings were correct so that you're not cutting the wrong size. So you would just cut this out, lay this on top of your strip, and then I would also add a ruler to assist, but just line this up on the edge of your paper template and your strip or your rectangle and then cut along this side. This is already five inches wide, so you won't have to cut along these sides at all, but you'll just cut along that side as well as this side, and you'll have your Dresden shapes. There are also Dresden ruler templates that you can purchase. This one is by Darlene Zimmerman from Easy Quilting. It's pretty old. I don't know if it's still available, but there's a lot out on the market. They're fairly cheap. And if you think that this is a technique that you'd want to continue to do or make more of, or maybe make a full Dresden plate, I would recommend purchasing one of these templates. This one is actually an 18 degree Dresden. So if you made the full circle, like a full regular Dresden plate, there would be 20 different Dresdens, I don't know if you call them that, but 20 separate pieces to make one full circle. There's different size ones. Some, I've seen some that only have 12. It's, it's all based on a circle, right? So there's 360 degrees in a circle. I talk a lot about geometry on this channel. Oh my gosh, uh, sorry. So this is probably more of a major than you want to know, but 360 degrees divided by 20 Dresdens, that's 18 degrees. So if you only have 12 Dresdens, then that would be a 30 degree Dresden. So just pay attention if you're purchasing one of these that you're getting the right size. If you purchase a kit from me, lucky you, these are actually already cut out for you. So you don't even have to worry about it. So I'm just teaching you today how to make this center unit for the April showers block. If you'd like to learn how to make the entire block, make sure to stay tuned till the end and I'm gonna show you how to assemble it all. So let's go ahead and get started preparing our background. You're gonna need to cut once on the diagonal from corner to corner. However, before you cut, you're gonna to wanna to make sure if you have a directional print that your fabric is facing the correct direction. So if you can see here in this example, we're gonna want our diagonal to go this direction. So make sure that you have your top facing towards you and your ruler facing in this direction before you cut, if you have a directional print. If not, it really doesn't matter. So just go ahead and cut from one diagonal to the other. And now that we have that cut in half, we're gonna want to be very careful because this is now a biased edge and you can stretch it. So be very careful, but we're gonna fold these in half this direction along the line you just cut and put a little crease line here so that you can mark the center. You can also take a little chalk marker or fabric marker and mark that, which I'm gonna do just for ease of showing. Hopefully it shows up better in the video. I know the crease lines don't. So you just do this to both sides and then you are going to do the same thing with your umbrella handle. And here's a quick tip. Since we folded those right sides together, if you fold these wrong sides together, and then 
this way you'll have two valleys that when you put them right sides together to sew them it's two valleys from the fold instead of a valley and a mountain because sometimes that makes it kind of difficult to line up so i'm going to just mark this so you can see i'm taking my centers that i marked putting these right sides together and just lining this up gently along the edge so i don't stretch this bias seam and since this is a bias seam i am going to pin this before i sew it so i'm just going to stick a pin here in the center and along both edges out here. And then I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and stitch this seam at a quarter inch. And then we're going to press towards the background. After you stitch this side, you're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side, attaching this side to this one. And once again, press towards the background. So quick note before we square this up, when you go to sew this together, you're gonna wanna put your handle piece on the bottom touching your feed dogs because it was cut on the straighted grain and it's a more stable piece. The background triangle was on the bias, so it could cause it to stretch more and warp a little bit. So you always wanna sew with your more stable piece touching the feed dogs. So make sure to do that when you stitch. And then also you're gonna to wanna to be real careful when you press these open because this is the bias seam once again. So I like to give just a quick little finger press and then make sure you set your iron down and just press the seam, don't iron it open. Okay, so now that we have this all prepped and ready to go, we're gonna to need to square this up to seven and three quarters of an inch. So if you've ever wondered how to square up a block if you don't have the exact size ruler, we are actually squaring this up to seven and three quarters of an inch just to give us a little bit of wiggle room to square things up once again after we add our umbrella Dresden. So seven and three quarters, I don't have a seven and three quarter inch square ruler. So what you're gonna do is just take a ruler that is square, that is larger than the size you need, and you're just gonna place it along the edge. I like to make sure I have just enough extending beyond every side. And then I check here for what size I need to square it up to. So seven and three quarters. So I find my seven and three quarter inch marks and I have plenty extending beyond these lines. So I know I'm gonna have enough to trim it up. Also, since we have this lovely diagonal handle here, I have a diagonal line along my ruler and I'm eyeballing that trying to get that perfectly centered with my handle before I cut. Since I moved it I'll just double check again yes I have plenty extending beyond here I have fabric extending beyond these edges as well so I will I will just go ahead and cut these two sides and then we are gonna spin this ah. <laughs> spin this if you don't have a bunch of stuff in the way and trim the other side so now that we have this side perfectly squared that we already cut you're going to take those edges and line them up with your seven and three quarter inch marks along this edge and this edge so there's seven three quarters along this edge and now i find my seven and three quarters along the bottom and i'm just making sure my edge is running right along that line. Everything still looks good along this side as well. And then I go ahead and trim these two edges. And then we'll have a perfectly squared up block to seven and three quarters that will be ready for us to place our Dresden umbrella on top. So now it's time to prepare our Dresden umbrella. So what you're gonna do is take your Dresdens and fold them right sides together with this longer of the short sides. So you're gonna fold them together and you're gonna stitch along this edge here. You're gonna wanna make sure to stitch at a quarter inch and back stitch on both parts. And I like to actually shorten my stitch length to about 1.7 to two millimeters, just because we're gonna be pulling on this a little bit when we turn it right sides out and you don't want it to come unstitched. You can just chain stitch all of these. I like to stitch from the raw edge to the fold. Go ahead and stitch all of these and I'll meet you back here. So 
So once you finish sewing all your Dresdens, you're gonna want to set the seams. And you wanna go down just a little bit so that you have a registration mark for when we go to place these so that we'll get our points nice and centered. We'll flip these right side out. So before we turn these right side out, we're actually gonna want to trim away a little bit. This is the, the fold side right here. We're just gonna wanna trim away a little bit about maybe to like an eighth of an inch right here. You wanna give enough of a seam so that it's not gonna fray and come undone, but you just want to help reduce that bulk in that point, so that folded edge. You can leave the raw edge. I'm just doing this just a little bit in the fold part. Okay, so now it is time to flip these right sides out. So what I like to do is stick my thumb inside of here, this pocket we made, and I just give a quick finger press. I take my thumb and run it along that seam and then that kind of folds this over. It doesn't really matter which direction it goes. It kind of just tells you which way it wants to fold. So that's the way I press it. And then I stick my thumb all the way down in there and pinch here together and then pull and poke it through. And then now is where you take a bodkin, a turning tool, a chopstick even, and you're just gonna take that and poke this out so that you have a nice sharp crisp point. Now this is where that crease line that we put in there comes in handy because you're you can't really see it I'm sure on camera but when you are doing this you'll see it. So here's my crease line right here and I'm taking my seam line that we sewed and lining it up with that center crease line so that we know this point will be good and centered. And once we do that, just kind of finger press it here, give it a good press down. I like to hold it right here. If I already finger pressed it, then I know it'll iron where I want it to stay. And that way I can keep my fingers back out of the way so I don't accidentally burn myself. And then you just set the iron there and press it. And then I like to turn it over and make sure I'm happy with my point. If not, you can just go in, readjust it. Mine looks pretty good, so I'm gonna leave it, but then I just like to press it one more time from the front, and that'll also help to get rid of that registration mark that we put in. So just continue doing that with all your Dresdens. Now that all of our Dresden points have been prepared, it's time to sew them together. So you want to just make sure you have them laid out in the order that you want to sew them together. And then you're going to take your first set, so I'm going to flip this orange onto our red, and we are going to focus our attention at this seam up here. We want to make sure both edges are lined up. We're going to stitch along here, so obviously we want those sides lined up, but we want these fold marks to be also lined up. If you're off a little bit down here, it really doesn't matter because that's going to be covered up by the top of our umbrella. Same goes for a traditional Dresden if you're making it a circle ring shape. The center usually has some kind of circle or other applique shape on top so you never see these edges. So you always want to focus your attention and make sure your edges up here are nice and aligned. So now that we have those in place, we'll just take them to the machine and stitch at a quarter of an inch. And I like to give a little back stitch. So I know these are still nice and aligned and we're gonna put our needle down. Back stitch and then make sure we're still lined up along this edge. And these are on the bias somewhat, so be a little gentle. So now we will just repeat this with our next color. We'll take our yellow and we're gonna put them right sides together. And once again, we're gonna focus on this edge. So I like to start with the edge that really needs to stay lined up. Mm -hmm. 
And just repeat this for all of your Dresdens. You're gonna wanna make sure when you trim these that you trim these really well because this is basically becoming an applique piece. So anything that's sticking out from this edge, you're gonna see, so you're gonna wanna trim these really nice and tidy so that they don't peek through to the front. So now that your Dresden is all the way sewn together, you're gonna need to press the seams. And it really doesn't matter which direction, you just want them all to go the same way. So I just sort of pull here, and this is one instance where you kind of do have to iron instead of press, because I have to just slide as I go and push these seams in that direction. And then once you get it like that, you just turn it over to the front and make sure that you didn't get any tucks or weird pleats ironed in there. And just repress the whole thing, making sure to focus on those seams and your points from before. Now that our dresden is nice and pressed, we're gonna add it to the background square. So just pull your background square over and make sure you have the handle in the right orientation. And you're gonna add your Dresden umbrella to the piece. I'm looking here to match up this edge and this edge with our Dresden just for general placement. And that looks good. And then also I'm wanting to pay attention to the center point, which happens to be yellow in my case. I want it to be roughly centered with this umbrella handle. If you can, you know, manipulate it to get it perfectly centered, great, but close enough is good enough. If your edges aren't quite lining up, just remember you're still gonna have a quarter inch seam allowance. So as long as it's extending an eighth inch past where your quarter inch would be, then it will be just fine. These were still stitched on the bias, so sometimes you can kind of just stretch it and pull it to get it where you want it to be to line up perfectly with this raw edge. And then that can help too. Just to double check before we attach this in place, you're gonna to wanna to take your umbrella top, fold it in half, and put a little crease line in here with your iron. And then take this point here and add it to the top corner. And just double check that all your raw edges here are completely covered. All of mine look good, but if for some reason yours weren't, you would want to scooch this umbrella up a little more towards this corner, or you could even cut a little bit bigger of a square just to make sure all those edges were covered and you would just lose a little more of your umbrella, but no big deal. So since mine are all good, our edges here are lined up at the center point, our raw edges for sure are gonna be covered. You can either pin it in place or use a little bit of glue. I prefer the glue because I feel like pins always get in my way. So I'm just gonna put a couple dabs um, just on the edges and the center. So basically my blue, my yellow, and my red, if that helps you visualize what I'm doing. And as I'm doing that, I am stretching this because my red was just a touch short. So I'm just stretching that to get it lined up with this edge and everything still looks good. So now it's time to applique this guy down. Oh, first also too, if you glued this instead of pinning it, hit this with a hot iron real quick and that'll help dry that glue and set it so that it will stay in place. So let's talk about how we attach this on now permanently. You could do this by hand with an applique stitch, or you could do it by machine. It's up to you. I'm gonna do it by machine and show you that technique today. You can use either an invisible thread or you can use like an 80 weight thread that will blend really well. So since you have a lot of colors, I recommend either doing a gray or a brown that's kind of a medium tone to help try to blend all of them because there's no way you're gonna switch colors. So invisible thread would work if you have it. Sometimes that can be fiddly to work with. So it's up to you, but I'll show you how I attach it. I'm gonna use a blind hem stitch today. 
So let's briefly discuss how I set up my machine. First of all, if you have a single needle hole plate on, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to switch back to your regular wide plate. If you have an open toe foot, I recommend using that, but I do not have one for this machine, so I'm using a clear foot, so I can still somewhat see. The main thing is you need to make sure that you have an opening so you can stitch from side to side. Um, thread. I am using Invisifil thread by Wonderfill. It's an 80 weight thread. And then in my bobbin, I'm using their deco bob. It's also a really lightweight as well. It might even be a hundred weight, their deco bob. But that's how I have that set up. And um, since it is cross threaded on here, it's better to have this on horizontally instead of up and down. If it's all the threads face this way in the same direction, then it's better to be in an up and down position. But since this is cross wound, it's better to be in the horizontal position. So that's the way I have it threaded. And then let's talk about the stitch. So I'm gonna use a blind hem stitch today. And this one, do you notice how it's got four straight stitches, then it bites in and back out? I'm looking for the one that this one has, well, I made this small already. Let me make it bigger so you can see. Um, this only has two straight stitches in between. That's the one that I'm looking for. Or if your machine has only one straight stitch, that'd be even better. So that's what I'm looking for. And I have just made this go down quite a bit. You can start with one wide by one in your length as well, but that looks a little too large to me. So I think it still needs to be a little bit closer together in the stitch length. So I'm thinking that you want it to look like a hand stitch. So when you hand applique something, you don't want your stitches more than an eighth of an inch apart. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. I want it to be basically like a hand stitch look. So now that I've got this set up, the important thing is we're not gonna start stitching straight on our umbrella. You're gonna wanna get a scrap piece of something. I just folded this over in half and put it on a scrap piece of fabric and we're going to practice on this and make sure that it looks good how we want it. We can make fine tune adjustments with width and length and that way we have everything set up how we really like it before we start on our actual piece. So let me get you set up in the tripod and I will show you what I mean. So by looking at my stitch, it says that it's going to do a straight stitch first. And that's another reason why you want to practice because you need to know if you're going to have the bite first or the straight stitch first. So it's always good to practice on a scrap. So I've just put my needle down right next to the edge of the fabric into the background and put my foot down and I'm going to just start stitching. And practice and just see if this is how I like it. I might need to fine tune it and adjust the stitch length or width. So I'm gonna just do this and pull this out to show you and we can take a look. Yeah. So the stitch is right here and you can barely see the bite. So I really like the look of that. You can see I practiced in other spots and it was a lot more noticeable. This one, you hardly see it at all. And it bites in just enough that it's definitely holding the fabric down. So we know that it's gonna be okay there. And yeah, it, it's gonna just blend right in. So I ended up on mine and my Bernina, both my Berninas going back and forth have different <laughs> measurements and stuff too. So it's really going to be dependent upon your machine. But I set mine at 0.6 in stitch length and 0.9 in width. And that's where I ended up being happy with mine. So a good frame of reference is start with one wide and one length and then just go from there and make your adjustments how you like it. 
so now that we have everything fine-tuned with our practice piece it's time to move on to our umbrella so I have restarted my stitch by selecting my button so that way I know it's gonna start with a straight stitch again and I'm gonna hand turn or turn the hand wheel by hand put my needle down and put it into the background right next to my applique so when you're doing this, you're trying to get your straight stitches into the background and then the bite to go onto and then off of your applique umbrella piece. So all your straight stitches into the background, your bite on and off in this applique piece. So we're gonna go ahead and go forward. Let's see, we're gonna do a straight stitch and bite. Straight stitch into the background onto there. And you just are going to go real slow so that you know you're going to have a nice hidden stitch. Like I said, if you would like to do this by hand, feel free to do so. Um, I was just in the mood to show you this technique. And hopefully my fingers are not in the way blocking everything. Really hard to see. It'd be better with an open toe foot. I wish I had one for you guys. So when I get to this corner, I just I paid attention. It went like this, and I'm in this V. It's getting ready to do two straight stitches. So I'm gonna go forward those two. I'm gonna have it bite in and off. Now it's gonna be doing a straight stitch again. So I'm gonna touch my stitch button, and at least on a Bernina you can do that, and it'll start all over. It'll go straight. And now it'll bite over and I'm a little bit off, but that's okay. Let me see if I can get this to zoom in for you. I right, got you zoomed in. So if you get off, I know I'm going down the straight stitch. Just try to get off to the edge. I'm not going to rip anything out. And these are still such a, skinny stitch that we're not going to have to worry about it. Um, you're just going to take your time, go slow, have your straight stitches in the background, your bite going onto your applique umbrella piece. And this is a, see how this is bunching up? My foot is not letting it slide underneath because this is a thicker seam. So we'll just lift our presser foot up and that'll help take care of that. Now that's flat and it should continue on just normally. And then I'm just to the corner where that blue meets the green. And you wanna pay attention to what your last stitch was. I was videoing and talking, so I don't really know. So I'm just gonna Go for it. Okay, it's getting ready to take a stitch in and out. So now I'm gonna turn because I know my next stitch will be a straight stitch. And then continue on. You want to make sure your corner point is good and secure so I try to have it bite onto that corner and then turn and then bite onto it again so multiple times it'll go over it to really make sure that point is good and tacked down. Same thing here let's lift our presser foot so that slides a little better. Bite in and off. And if you can't see, this is where the open toe foot is better. Okay, I'm all the way to the point. So it's getting ready to take a bite in. So we'll, whoops. Now I'm accidentally on the yellow, but that's okay. We'll just take a straight stitch off this way. And then now it'll be ready to bite in. Okay. 
Another thing you can do if it's just really not moving, because this corner point is also um, pretty thick, you can also raise your foot height of your... You can also raise your foot height of your presser foot so to help uh, compensate so it'll slide a little better. I went one stitch too far, so I'm gonna straight stitch off this way. And now I'm in the background, so it's gonna bite in again because I did two stitches off. And that's how we deal with that if you go too far. If you have a speed control, another good thing to do is turn that down so you don't accidentally go a little too fast or be tempted to go too fast because I've been going kind of fast to hurry up to get through this video, but normally I would go a little slower. So you do see it, but it's it's minimal and it's gonna hold it down. And once you get it quilted, you're not gonna notice it that much. So from far away, you can see it's not it's not that bad. You could also do you know a little, maybe not even quite as wide or as long. I mean, I think the length was good, which is 0.6 on mine like I said but I think you could make it even a little smaller with the bite in um, you just want to make sure that you're catching the applique and as long as you are that's all that matters so you could actually make it a little more hidden I think but I'm happy with it I think it'll be good it's just a learning technique to learn how to use um, um, this is a turned edge applique versus our March block which was raw edge so this way it won't fray or anything, but you can still put it down by machine so you don't have to do it by hand. So now that we have this applique on, I'm gonna give it a quick little press. It's just to help flatten some of that out. And if your applique is coming loose a little bit from gluing, or it's, you can always just add another dab of glue up here towards the top to help hold this down for this step and then make sure to give it a little press so that it will set that glue and then what we're going to do is add this umbrella top so what you need to do let me move this iron so i don't burn myself is well actually let's go ahead and iron this back open to make this step easier okay so it's a little flatter now we're going to draw a line. This is going to be a stitching line. So that fold line that we had already, you could leave it like that and just sew on it and that'll be fine. But I'm going to go ahead and mark it just so you guys can see what I'm doing in the video. I like to have a stitch line. I think it's easier to see anyways, even not for video. So it's up to you. If you want to skip this step, that is totally fine too. So we're going to just draw this line and place this back in this corner and making sure we're lining up these edges here. So when this is in place, we're gonna fold this back so this line is still going the correct direction and we'll just place a couple of pins there, to hold it in place and one should be fine. And I'm just gonna pin it on this side because there's less seams and that'll hold it in place. Now you're gonna just stitch straight on this line so that it'll make this snowballed corner so when it's stitched down, it will cover up all those raw edges. So I'm gonna do that real quick and I'll meet you right back here. 
All right, now that this has been stitched right along the line, we are gonna just give it a quick press and then we're gonna finger press this corner back. And now our umbrella top is done. So we just need to trim away some of the excess here. So um, what I did, what you wanna just leave this, but trim away this part here. So you can either do this with a rotary cutter or find it easier just to go ahead and trim away with some scissors because it doesn't have to be exact. And you just trim away these back bits here and you have your umbrella block. So now that that's trimmed, I'm gonna give it a quick press again so that will stay nice and flat, that umbrella top. And if you kind of hold it with your hand to hold that heat in and really help keep that corner flat. So now we need to square it up to seven and a half inches. If you remember, we had trimmed it to seven and three quarters just to give ourselves a little wiggle room. Because sometimes when you applique things, it'll shift or scrunch up a little bit. So we just wanted to give us ourselves a little insurance, I guess. And so this time when I square up, I wanna start with these two edges because I wanna trim as little as possible away from the umbrella. So I am basically just lining this up. I'm looking at this diagonal line again and making sure I'm going through this point of the umbrella handle and going straight to the tip of the umbrella point. And I'm just making sure there's fabric extending me on both sides so that I know I'm gonna give myself a perfectly square corner here. But you can see, I don't know if you can, but <laughs> my red umbrella pieces extending a little bit further than my background piece. And at this little spot, even though it's just really small, there's a little bit of fabric not extending for me to cut off. So I'm actually gonna scooch it down just a bit, realign this corner point. And then that way I'll have enough to make sure that I'm all centered and I'm gonna trim everything up in this corner is going to be perfect. So I just trim and it's very slight. It's just slivers. You can see when I pull this away, see it's just slivers, but it's enough over the course of a whole quilt to really throw your accuracy off. So now that these sides are perfect and this corner is good, we're going to flip it 180 degrees. And now we're going to put those lines on our seven and a half inch lines because we want our block to finish at seven inches. So I'm just lining these marks up here along the edge here, along the edge here. And our diagonal line is still centered with our umbrella point here so now we will just go ahead and trim this guy up so see our extra fabric came off of our handle because we really wanted to leave all of our dresden in place so that's all there is to it now it's all trimmed up ready to go so to make our bonus block you're going to need one of the dresden umbrella blocks that we just made and this is going to be our center unit then you're gonna need to cut four sashing strips at three inches by seven and a half inches. And these will go around the block here. And then you're gonna need four of these raindrop cornerstones. And if you haven't watched my previous video, I show you how to make these. And I also give you all my tips and tricks on foundation paper piecing so you'll never struggle again. I promise you can do it. So click on the link in the description below or in the upper right corner, and you can see my video on how to make these. So go check that out, make four of these, and these will go in the corners, just like so. This now becomes Attach Me Mountain Quilters 
block of the month for the April advance block. So from here, you're gonna notice that I still have the paper attached to the back of these. You're gonna wanna leave that on until the block is fully completed. We're gonna just assemble this in rows. So we're gonna attach our cornerstones to this top sashing piece. We're gonna sew these to this one and these here. After you sew these at a quarter of an inch, you're gonna to wanna to press towards the sashing strip. So the top and the bottom rows, you're gonna press in and on the center row, you're gonna press out. So after you stitch these all together, then we will assemble the rows. And I'll show you that step after I get done stitching these. One more quick note, you may want to use a smaller stitch length when you sew these here, just because it will help make this paper easier to tear when you remove the paper from the back. But if you didn't do it, it's not a big deal, it'll still rip out. All right, so now they're assembled in rows and it's time to assemble the rows together. So you'll just stitch this together here and this together here, and then your seams should nest because we press these in opposite directions. So go ahead and stitch these at one quarter of an inch and I'll meet you back here to show off the finished block. So quick note about our block. You may want to backstitch here when you attach the rows because you're gonna start tearing the paper off once you get it stitched. And sometimes it can cause the stitches to come undone a little bit. So when you start pulling this paper off, you're gonna wanna be a little gentle along these outside edges. What I do is I kinda just pull like this, like with the pull the actual fabric and it'll pop the seam. And then you can just start pulling and then I'll just fold that and then it should tear real nice and easy. And then you can get these seam lines, just pull right out. And you're just gonna keep working around the block and just gently holding onto the seams as you pull to help keep them from coming undone. And you just work around the block like that. So I just wiggle it back and forth, get it started, and then I can start tearing along those stitch lines. And when they're already torn, they should kind of just pop away when the other side's already been removed. So I just work around in a circle and Tear them out. Now remember this piece had a little bit of glue, so do your best, but this will wash out, so I'm not too worried about it if there's a little bit of paper there left. And then we'll just continue until all of this paper is removed. And I actually decided to press my seams open just to help reduce the bulk. Feel free to press however you would like. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this, removing this paper press my seam and I'll show you the finished block. So now that the block is complete, we are gonna use my special spray starch. Make sure to check out the video links below for my recipe on how to make this. But you'll see here that it lays relatively flat. The seams, you can, you're gonna be able to tell here. See how these are laying Okay, but just, it's not completely flat. Watch what happens when we add this magic spray starch. So I just pat this down to make sure it's exactly flat and square. Make sure not to stretch because at this point it will stretch. It is a spray starch alternative. And we're just going to press gently up and down. I'm focusing on the row seams right now. And then working my way out. just because I really want those <clears throat> seams that were pressed open to lay super flat. So that's why I'm focusing there. Just working my way over. You can also put a clapper on here to help with these seams to lay flat as well. Okay. 
and it's gonna be amazing when you see the back. You're not gonna believe your eyes. You're gonna want to go watch that video immediately and make your own magic spray search. Okay, you ready for this? I'm gonna let that just set for one second before I flip it to help really set the seam on the back. Okay, now look at this. Look how flat and perfect this is. Let me bring it up. Look at these now. Perfectly flat. So nice and crisp. And it's also much cheaper than Mary Ellen's Best Press or Flatter Spray. So definitely check out the link up here in the corner or down below so that you can make your own magic spray search. Thanks for joining me today and learning how to make April's Advanced Block of the Month. If you appreciate this video and like to help me out, please give this video a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, make sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified the next time I release a video. If you haven't done so already, connect with me on Facebook at Quilted From The Roots. That way you can post a photo of your completed block. I'd love to see it. Until next time, feel free to check out the previous Block of the Month playlist. In there, you'll find the recipe to my magic spray starch, as well as the beginner block for the month of April. So thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.